Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be talking about the debt ceiling, but it is not the government debt ceiling that we're looking for. It is the personal debt ceiling. Now, this was one of the big concerns when it comes to the um, financial education piece, really the, the counseling piece. Um, the federal debt ceiling is really um, under a lot of scrutiny right now. It seems like they're making a lot of checks and bounds and balances to really not raise the debt ceiling, but ultimately it's going to be kind of both sides of the parties deciding on where it is going to be. But at the same time, Guys, U.S. households are in a very similar predicament, running up credit card balances like absolutely crazy. So in the first quarter of 2023, consumer debt hit a fresh brand new high of $17 trillion. Now, when you think about that, guys, the total consumer debt is at $17 trillion. According to a recent um, report on household debt from the Federal Reserve, it is $17 trillion. Of that, credit card balances are almost or $1 trillion alone, guys. Credit card balances as of right now are $986 billion as of the last reporting. So I know a lot of Americans kind of fall into this um, same kind of debt ceiling issue that we're having. So I'm going to go through, um, try to kind of go over some ways to lower this debt, to get rid of this debt, to really hit the cap. Because worst case scenario is you're going to hit a point, could be personally, um, where you cannot borrow any more money. And that again is going to be your own debt ceiling. So Americans are watching the government pile up money as an almost insurmountable amount of debt. A lot of people are saying, why don't they do the same? What does it really matter? How to know if you face debt default. This is again when it kind of gets the code red, when you're getting to the point of the crash and burn, when you cannot borrow any more money. After contending with high inflation for over a year, households are nearing the breaking point, which again is really, really tough. Using the Great Recession, which we know was many years ago as a guide, the pro uh, projected breaking point is the level of the credit card debt that we were almost at where the payments become unsustainable for a majority of people. Now the household credit balances are $9,990. That is right guys, we are almost in an average household credit card balance of $10,000, which again is significantly up when you look at even 12 months ago. Um, it's, it's kind of getting to the point where people cannot pay their bills. If rates, as they, we've seen them, they said they've kind of leveled out, but even with the leveling of, out of rates, we have not seen the debt slow. So essentially what people are doing is they're supplementing their income with credit card debt. So the things that are buying or the things that they want to buy, they don't have the actual money for. So they're buying it, increasing those balances on credit cards. I mean, we've seen almost a $40 billion increase um, quarter over quarter just in credit card debt alone. Now you couple that with higher inflation and you couple that with record high interest rates, um, that, that is really where the debt, guys, it is going to get to the point where those minimum payments are gonna to continue to increase. You add on the higher cost of goods and services and that, again, will kind of make the breaking point. Now the big thing here, more than one third have credit card debt, have zero emergency fund, which we've talked about before. It is really imperative, guys making the minimum payment on those credit card debts, making sure that you're putting money into a savings account so you don't have to continue racking up credit card debt. So what a lot of people will do, let's say you have a higher credit card bill, is you'll pay the bill, you'll put 100, you'll put $200 extra on it, whatever it may be, just to go ahead and use that credit card for the entire month. That is not the way you want to manage this, guys. Chances are the credit card bill is going to go up much faster because of the interest rate that is running. Then if you just paid the minimum payment and saved the money that you need aside, if an emergency happens, I want that emergency fund to be utilized, not going right to credit card debt. Now, one thing to remember, guys, it is never too late to turn things around. Um, as the government negotiates, you can kind of do the same. Looking at cutting costs, this is very imperative. This is a lot of the accountability as yourself, making sure that you're cutting costs, that you're managing costs. If you make, you know, $5,000 a month and you're spending $7,000 a month, there is going to be a breaking point, guys. There is going to be a point where you cannot borrow any more money, where you cannot run the meter forever because, again, the monthly payments are going to get too high and they're going to overtake you to where it's looking at bankruptcy, it's looking at default, your credit score is affected. A lot of negative things can come with that kind of scenario that we've seen there. So experts recommend, including myself, starting with a budget. This is really huge, guys. 
We have talked about this for a while, um, using the envelope method, using an online method, using a you know, 50, 30, 20 rule, using a 60% budget, using a zero budget. Um, there are so many different methodologies out there that I really do recommend going through, trying them yourselves, seeing what they're all about, seeing what works, making adjustments as needed. But the first goal, of course, according to Dave Ramsey and everybody else, is getting that emergency fund. Now, fundamentally, a lot of people are saying the $1,000 is not a high enough balance for an emergency fund, but for a majority of people, guys, it's not so much about the balance, it's not so much about the money that you have in the emergency fund, it is really starting the fundamental basics of saving versus spending and using the emergency fund versus essentially getting more credit card debt. The emergency fund, which can shield you from accumulating more debt while you're working to pay off existing balances. Again, fundamentally, you have to get down with the budget and see exactly what it is, making sure that you have enough and that you're living within your means. 60%, the 60% the budgeting rule, which I'm gonna cover in another video, really says 60% of your income should go into your fixed expenses. So when you look at housing, when you look at your car, when you look at insurance, when you look at credit card bills, debt repayment, things of that nature, 60% of your money should literally be set aside. The other 40% that you have in there, 30% of it should go to debt repayment or investing. And then the other 10 is just kind of the, the fun stuff or the stuff, the discretionary spending that you have. But this is kind of a little bit of a different structure when it comes to the debt, which again, we'll get into um, just a little bit. Now, a couple other things to remember, guys, is when you look at credit card debt, consolidation, consolidating credit cards do work. But again, fundamentally, you have to change the spending behaviors. If you go ahead and let's say consolidate $20,000 in debt, the rate is much lower. It's a set rate. It's a set payment. You can afford it. But you go right back to use the utilizing those credit cards. That is really now you have an unsecured loan. Now you have credit card debt. Now you're just multiplying the payments that you have on there. Fundamentally, again, something has to shift to where you're not accumulating more debt on those credit cards. So after years of rock bottom returns, which we have seen, some top yield savings accounts are offering up to 5%. So this is actually where they kind of flip the script on a lot of different people, guys. It went from, hey, credit card rates are low. You always want to borrow money. Everything to buy is super low. Auto rates were 1.74 to now auto rates being at 6%. And in turn, certificates were at 0 0.01, 0 0.1. Um, most of them were under 1%. And now we're seeing not only high interest savings accounts, but we are also seeing CD rates that are four, four and a half, five, five and a half percent, which is incredible when it comes to the amount of actually being able to save. So again, instead of having a balance on a credit card where you're actually paying 20, 25, 30% every single month to that credit card company, um, which again is kind of crazy, the min minimum payments. If you look at your statement, guys, most of them will say it'll take 10, 20, 30 years to pay it off. It is kind of crazy. But when you look on the flip side, if you are saving money, if you're on that other side, you're finally to the point where they are going to pay you to borrow your money or have your money in institutions to essentially lend it out to people that have higher interest rates, that have credit cards, things of that nature. It is really the reason why, again, fundamentally, you have to get a hold of that spending so you know exactly where your money is going. The key points in this, guys, the federal debt ceiling is really in a stalemate. They're in conversations right now, but the U.S. households are in the same boat. Um, after running up record credit card balances, we got ourselves into it, just like the government did. Unfortunately for us, we cannot just continue to raise that debt ceiling um, over and over again. Essentially, it is making more money, getting a second job, managing your budget, and paying down the debt that you have borrowed. So, all right, guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and as always, thank you guys for watching.